With a bandsaw and a little wood, you could make this reindeer sculpture. In fact, with a bandsaw and a little more wood, you could make all of Santa's reindeer. And I'm going to show you how to do just that. And I'll share a secret with you that may determine how many reindeer it is that you have to make. The answer, I promise, isn't what you're expecting. It seems that there have been a few changes in reindeer personnel since Clement Clark Moore first took census. There are a few of us who remember this, but uh, a few years ago, back when uh, woodworkers were trading in their stone tools for ones made out of bronze, I started Hands On Magazine. And in the very first issue of Hands On, there was an article on compound cutting on the bandsaw. And I uh, showed this reindeer as an example. In fact, I showed it again when I wrote my book on using the bandsaw. And today, I have an update on that project that I want to share with you. I reworked our original hands-on reindeer pattern so that you could make it from scrap wood, specifically salvaged lumber. The blank you cut is three and a half inches wide and one and a half inches thick, uh, just the same as a regular two by four, like this uh, salvaged piece here. In fact, this reindeer is made from a salvaged two by four. And then my craftsman buddy Travis came up with a way to glue together different scraps of wood, oak, walnut, cherry, whatever you have, and distinguish the antlers, the hooves, the nose, and the body. Glue up this, and you can make this. The full-sized pattern, the plans, and the instructions for these reindeer are available from the Workshop Companion General Store. Just copy the URL address in the, in the uh, description below, paste it into your browser's address bar, and that will take you right to the plan. Or you can visit our website at workshopcompanion.com and follow the links to the store. Let's get to work. The first thing we have to do is we have to cut a wood blank. This is one and a half inches by three and a half inches by seven and a half inches. Or, if you live anywhere else in the world except the United States, Liberia, and Myanmar, this is 3.8 centimeters by 8.9 centimeters by 19.1 centimeters. Now, you don't have to glue anything up. You could make it just from a single wood blank, like this uh, piece of 2 by 4 But, if you have the scraps, uh, choose a medium colored wood for the uh, deer body, like this uh, piece of mahogany or cherry, or we have here some, uh, some old oak. It comes out really nice. For the, uh, for the antlers, make a, get a light colored wood like this maple or uh, some poplar. And for the hooves and the nose, you could take a dark colored wood like walnut or purple heart or uh, the cedar. Uh, the cedar, when you apply oil to it, makes a really brilliant red. Might be good for the nose. Or not. You can mix them up any way you want. There's nothing here that says these have to be realistic reindeer. Uh, this turned out pretty nice. This could be an alien reindeer. Or could be a teenage reindeer that got his fur dyed and his uh, antlers painted to annoy his parents. Anything goes. If you're making a glued up blank, Cut a dado in the middle piece for the strip that will form the nose. The rest of the parts, the hooves and the antlers, just sort of get glued on to either end of the middle part. Cut all the pieces so that the grain runs in the same direction. This will give you the strongest possible finished reindeer. Uh, the antlers will still be a little weak, but you'll still have uninterrupted grain throughout the legs, the body, the neck, and the head. Remember that you have to glue some of these blanks end grain to end grain. Now that's not the strongest uh, glue joint in the world, but there are things that you can do to make it stronger. Apply a generous amount of glue to the end grain. Wait 10 to 15 minutes for the end grain to wick up that glue, and then apply some more. Clamp these together, and wait at least a day before you do any song. <laughs> Cut.
compound cutting is a technique in which you have to make two series of cuts on the bandsaw. You make your first series of cuts, turn the wood 90 degrees, and make your second series of cuts. When you remove all the scrap, you have a three-dimensional shape. The first step is to mark the cuts that you want to make on your blank. Now I've taken these full-size patterns and I've made three templates to help me mark the blank. The first is just a three and a half inch by seven and a half inch sheet with two holes drilled in it. And I'm going to use that to mark holes that I want to drill in the blank itself. There we go. This is the edge template. Make sure I line up the nose of the template with that strip of wood that I glued to make the nose. Looks good. And then this is the front template. All right, let's go do some drilling. The holes that I'm about to drill will become part of the front profile. Now I could make these cuts on a bandsaw, but I find that drilling holes save some elbow grease, especially when it comes time to sand these suckers. Now <clears throat> I'm going to drill a two and a quarter inch hole using this multi-spur bit at the bottom of the blank. This will become part of the legs. Next, we're going to use a Forstner bit to drill a one-inch hole that will become part of the antlers. Now, if you don't have multi-spur or Forstner bits, no matter, you can also use hole saws. Before you begin cutting on the bandsaw, make sure that your blade is square to your table. Check at the back of the blade and then at the side. Looks good, so I think we're good to go here. Now I'm going to begin by cutting the side profile first. I like to work my way from the shorter cuts to the longer cuts. Uh, I'm using a quarter inch blade, but you can also use a 3 16th inch blade. Uh, the quarter inch should make all these radius cuts, but I may have to do some backing out now and then. As you're cutting, save your scraps <clears throat> because we're going to put these back in place and create a flat surface 
on which we can still see the marks for the cuts we need to make. Okay, not the neatest job I've ever done. If you can't see the marks through the tape, it's no matter. Just mark again on top of the tape. There we go. Let me reset the bandsaw guides. And once again, we're going to start with the shortest cuts first. I'm going to begin with the legs here. We just remove all the scrap and all the tape. <laughs> and that begins to look like a deer. Sanding these deer goes fairly quickly if you have a small set of drum sanders that you can use. In fact, you can do some of the final shaping, uh, making sure that the curves on the surface of the, uh, these deer are fair. I've made a special table that uh, accommodates these drum sanders, lets me keep them organized and lets me bury the drum sander I'm using right in the table. This auxiliary table clamps directly to my drill press table. <coughs> Unfortunately, you are going to have to do a little hand sanding. You can't reach everywhere with the drum sanders. As you can see here, I've wrapped a piece of sandpaper around a hacksaw blade to help me get into those areas between the legs and the antlers. By the way, as you're working, you might also keep a bottle of cyanoacrylate glue handy. Where the uh, reindeer is weak, you have a tendency to chip or break off little tiny pieces. When that happens, you can glue them right back on, wait a minute, and be right back in business. Nobody ever need know. Once you've sanded the reindeer, uh, apply a finish. Now, <clears throat> I would suggest a hand rubbed oil finish. I'm using tongue oil. But you can really apply almost anything. Once again, be careful around the uh, fragile parts of the reindeer, especially the antlers.
and that completes the set. And if you're wondering how many reindeer you actually have to make in order to duplicate Santa's crew, well, that depends on whom you consult. If you believe Clement Clark Moore, the answer is Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donder, and Blitzen. That's according to his 1829 poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas. However, in 1939, Robert Louis May lionized Rudolph. And when I went to Google, the fountain of all digital knowledge, to uh, research the names of these reindeer so I got them straight, I found out there was also Olive. I kid you not, I swear upon a sprig of holly that I am telling the truth, according to Google. Uh, I couldn't find out when uh, Olive actually joined Santa's crew, but I understand she's something of a pain in the neck uh, for Rudolph. I also found out that this year Santa will be 1,749 years old. That's approaching middle age. But I sincerely hope that he and you all have a lot of Merry Christmases yet to come. So, get busy. You have 10 reindeer to reproduce. And if you wait too much longer, it could be 11. Thanks for watching.